Thanks to Roborock for sponsoring a portion of this video. All right, I'm gonna turn it on and see if it works. Let's let's see what happens. There we go. It's on. Let's see what happens. Uh... Tesla, like a lot of huge companies, is polarizing. I think mean, people are really in one of two camps, and then Elon himself is polarizing on top of that. So you take polarizing company, polarizing leader, and then polarizing technology like full self-driving, you got a lot of people with a lot of opinions. And when you hear the name full self-driving beta, at least my first thought was like, this sucker is gonna drive me, I'm gonna get in my car, I'm gonna type in work address, and it's going to drive me there. So I was excited when this beta program opened up. And after sort of broken promises, or at least over-optimistic promises, it's finally an option. And after kind of jumping through hoops and proving I could be a super safe driver, uh, I got access to the full self-driving beta. So I wanna talk about Tesla's full self-driving beta, what it is, and probably more importantly, what it isn't. All right, so the first thing you'll notice with full self-driving is visualizations. You can turn this on or off. I like it on, uh, but you get that little tadpole, little tail, you're wondering kind of what that is. That's where the car thinks you're going when you don't have a destination put in. The, the full self-driving part of it, as far as the self-driving, uh, it's gotta know where you're going. Otherwise, it's just kind of like autopilot on city streets. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in an address. Costco. So found a Costco. Um, it doesn't automatically start driving itself. You put a destination. You still have to activate full self-driving, which I'm going to go ahead and do right now. You have to be moving to do it. And it very gradually will start to creep out. And the line changes where the car thinks you're going to go. And it renders everything around you. Now, I want to get this out of the way. At best, it drives like a 15-year-old who just got their learner's permit and it is their first day behind a wheel. There's a lot of like... There's a lot of this happening, there's some floor in it, there's some random braking. It might make a left turn when it's not supposed to. Uh, I'd argue you have to pay more attention when this is on than you have to pay when you were just sort of regular driving, uh, listening to the radio. Um, and it's, see, right there. I saw a car coming fast around the corner despite it not being in our lane, it jammed on the brakes. And I wanna be like very, very, very clear about this. Uh, while the name says full self-driving beta, this in no way is true full self-driving. When it works, it works very well, uh, but you always have to be aware and always very actively paying attention. I'd even say paying more attention than you are when you are regular driving because it's not perfect. Again, it's in beta, it can suddenly turn left, it can suddenly jam on the brakes, it can think it see something that's not there. But you can see the visualizations happening, you can see the cars going by, and it's happening really well. And this is happening in real time, rendering things that are actually going on in the real world, taking those cars that it sees and rendering them here on the screen. So if those are making a left turn, it sees a car in front of us. This is a spot where there's not a stop sign, but I have to stop because there's oncoming traffic coming both directions. It goes really slowly and says autopilot creeping forward. So it's creeping. There's a truck coming right here, and I just stepped on the brakes. The car was still moving. Um, and that's sort of a perfect example of what you need to be aware of. It's good sometimes until, uh, until it's not. It does have some weird behaviors. If you're on a road, for example, that doesn't have a, a middle lane marking separating both directions, uh, it'll drive right in the middle as opposed to splitting it and driving off to the right. That's weird, but if it sees a car coming, it does a nice job of moving off to the side. I live in a community that has a roundabout. It does not like roundabouts. Right now, it's not handling um, U-turns, for example. And now the car is braking for some reason. Um, but as we drive past here, you notice there's a big truck, and it saw the big truck here on the screen, which is awesome. Let's see how it just stopped here. I don't know, see, it stopped here. As that truck passes, and now, it's allowing us to, to go. And then it's gonna kind of floor it to the red light and then quickly jam off to the right to make a right turn. But again, it is doing it on its own. I mean, so like that cool factor is, is, is definitely there, but every time you just gotta pay extra attention. And it told me, told me to drive us to Costco. And uh, if you look up ahead, 
I mean, we did make it to Costco. All right, so taking a step back and like actually thinking about what just happened, I got in my car, same car I've had for two years, set a waypoint, my car basically drove me there. Uh, that's incredible. As somebody who loves technology and cars, that is mind blowing, but it's clearly not just interesting to me. This benign 21 second video that I posted on Instagram did 2.6 million views. People were interested in what I had to say, the same thing on TikTok, interested in this technology. So what it is, is nowhere close to finished. Um, and that experience is where you can start to see at least what Tesla is trying to accomplish. And where they're trying to go is a very impressive vision. Uh, but when it comes to like, quote unquote, like real autonomous driving, like when you can sleep in the back of the car and not even have a steering wheel, the only experience I've had that even comes close to, as of right now, full autonomous driving uh, is Waymo. I was able to ride in a Waymo test vehicle way before they launched their pilot program in Arizona. And as impressive as that was, and that was about three years ago, I think Tesla's approach longer run might be better. So Tesla's building upon thousands and thousands of computers on wheels with cameras that can see the world and processing that can sort of make some sense of it. And at the flip of a switch, they can make every single one of those cars data points. And now that I've got access to the beta after driving the most careful I've ever driven in my entire life to get my score up, I am sort of one of those data points on sort of that tree of machine learning. Uh, so when I'm driving the car and make a mistake, that's one data point that can make it better. Or if the car is in its full self-driving bay and it makes a mistake, it's hopefully a mistake that it won't make again. So while the tech in the Tesla is polarizing how they use it, one piece of tech that is not polarizing um, is vacuums, especially vacuums with LiDAR built in. This is the Roborock S7 and it's got some tricks up its sleeve. This thing has been roaming around my house, sucking and cleaning and doing an amazing job uh, at both of those things. You probably know Roborock, we've done videos on the past. They've been in my house now for the better part of four years, but the S7 does everything that the previous models I've had did, but does it way better and has a bit of a secret. So the big one that's awesome to see is this thing will clean itself. It'll go back to the dock, it'll empty itself, and then it can go back out and finish clean again. And when you've got three kids and a furry dog at home, that's awesome. But beyond that, the cool little puck on the top has kind of become a hallmark of, of most modern Roborocks. It's using LiDAR. That same tech that is in other cars uh, self-driving will fully map your house, know where to go. It'll know where to vacuum. It's got mop functionality, it'll know where to mop. And then you could take that thing and move it upstairs or to a different room and it'll map that area and know exactly where to go. So if you've got a house that needs to be mopped and cleaned and you don't really wanna do any of the work to do it, 100% look no farther than the Roborock S7. So if you do want to check it out, if it sounds familiar, uh, we actually did a whole video on it. So you can see it doing its whole shebang and looking good while doing it. Otherwise, you know, link to it down below. All right, so there's a lot of things that I like about it. I think as I talk about it, there are two very clear camps when it comes to Tesla's full self-driving beta. There's the camp of, this is incredible. This is amazing. This is a glimpse of the future and Tesla is trying to get us there, trying to get us to robo taxis, trying to get us to full self-driving. And it's incredible that this technology is being developed in the open, letting people and millions of cars serve to make it better. Then there's the other approach of, that's gonna kill me, uh, that is not safe, that should not be on the road, I trust myself driving more. And I, in my opinion, the real version of it is probably somewhere in the middle. So I've had the full self-driving beta now for coming up on three weeks. Uh, I've had several updates that have come in. To me, the coolest part of the whole thing is the visualizations. Being able to see what the car is seeing. So this is an awesome opportunity to see how it's rendering out. So you have a pedestrian walking across the street. We have cars that are turning to even showing that it's a truck. You can clearly see there's one, two, three, four traffic signals. Um, up ahead, and it's really showing this stuff as it's happening in pretty much real time, differentiating between pedestrians, cars versus trucks, and doing a really admirable job of that. And this isn't necessarily what the car is seeing at that exact moment, it's just sort of for driver and passenger confidence, um, to give you representation of what the car is seeing. And it's crazy because my car is two years old, like I said, so it still has radar, but none of that radar is being used here. This is all cameras. 
and to be able to drive and see bikes and pedestrians and differentiate between cars and trucks and have it try to render where things I'm gonna go, that's awesome. And then you go ahead and tap that stock twice and you go into the full self-driving. And obviously you have to have a direction set. It has to know where you wanna go. So put an address in the GPS and in theory, it can drive you there. When it works, it is like a glimpse of the future. The fact that it is turning and the fact that it's putting on signals and doing all that stuff is bonkers to see in real life. You want to impress your friends, you want to impress a lady friend or a gentleman caller, show them this, uh, I think you'll be, you'll be okay. But then show them this for like 15 minutes consecutively and they'll be like, turn that off. And that's where I stand on, on full self-driving beta. I thought that something that was gonna be very close to full release. Elon's been talking about a cross-country road trip, full self-driving for four years. This technology as it exists right now is nowhere close to being ready for prime time. And by prime time, I mean every car using it and people inevitably not paying as much attention as they should. It is not there. It will cause a ton of accidents. It will get a lot of people hurt. But if you use it the way that it's supposed to be used right now, like really hand on the wheel, foot hovering over the brake, making sure it's not gonna do something crazy dangerous, it's awesome. And it really is sort of crystal balling, you know, five or 10 years in the future to see what things are going to look like. And that's cool. I love the fact that my car is a waypoint and that my car is contributing to the sort of machine learning to making this technology better. But I'm diligent about how I use it. And so I think by being diligent and using it, even when I don't necessarily want to, to try to train the machine, I think that's really cool. So here's some things that it does very well. Put it on a freeway, put in destination, you're gonna be cruising really happy. Not much improvements over what we've seen with Navigate and Autopilot. That's been around for a few years, but a little bit better. Where you gotta be extra careful is on city streets where it starts having to do roundabouts, where it starts to maybe have to do a U-turn, which as of right now, it can't handle, where there's multiple pedestrians, where there could be cones, and there could be emergency vehicles, and it could decide it's out of the blue to just stop in the middle of a street. Those are things that you have to be very, very aware of. Like I said, it's fun, very cool to see, but it is very clearly not ready. Now, in those videos I talked about earlier that kind of went, went semi-viral on, on Twitter and TikTok, there were a lot of comments at the same thing. I don't trust this. I don't trust my life to a computer. I'm gonna drive myself. And while I get the sentiment behind there that they don't trust a computer to drive themselves, I think their vision is that you can sleep in the back of the computer to drive itself. What I think that approach sort of omits or forgets is that there are other drivers on the road and there's other people driving you have to always pay attention to. Anytime you get behind the wheel of a car, you are risking your, your safety. And this is no different uh, in all candor. But if you're alert and if you are using it the way it's meant to, you can contribute to something very cool. And whether or not this approach or the LiDAR approach other companies, especially like Waymo, are taking will eventually succeed or whether or not this never happens, I don't know. But I do know my car, two years after I got it, can do things that it could never do the day I drove it home. As somebody who loves technology, I am absolutely here for it. I just don't trust it all the way.